Hello and welcome to this video. In this video we're going to explain the basic radio sailing radio system. So this is intended as a, a guide to newcomers and beginners and so it's, it's not really suitable for the experience. All radio sailing boats require the same basic parts. Um, so in the boat we have a rudder servo a winch to control sails, we'll have a receiver which talks to the transmitter and a battery to power those. Those appear in the boat. This is the pit that's held by the helmsman or helm and uh, this is the transmitter. So looking more closely at the transmitter, the controls and the transmitter, the ones that we will be using are the winch, which this operates a sail in and out, this is the throttle lever, and on the other side for the rudder, left and right. Okay, those are the two controls that we predominantly use, well, only use really, during racing. Now, when you buy a boat, depending on what type of boat you buy, whether it's, if it's a production on the mass-produced boats, the chances are it will come with ready fitted with the, the rudder servo and the winch. If you buy an RTR version that's ready to race, the chances are it will come with those two items and a receiver and a transmitter. So in theory you just add the batteries and uh, it's ready to race. However, you have to be a little bit careful with the transmitter because these do vary in quality. And the, the bottom end ones, the cheap ones, aren't quite as good as the mid-range ones or the expensive ones. So we'll, we'll look at the transmitter in a little more detail. Um, most of the transmitters we use in radio sailing are intended for flying and so they have an awful lot of controls and knobs and levers and switches that, to be honest, we don't use. Um, it's pointless spending a lot of money, many hundreds of pounds in some cases, on an expensive 12 channel radio because we only use two channels. Um, the rest are redundant. This one is, uh, is one of our favourites. It's the F Flysky FS i6, and it's a six channel mid range radio. As well as having six channels, this model also has 20 memories. The Flysky, you should be able to pick one of these up for around about £50 um, with, with one receiver. It is possible with these to use multiple receivers. This is a six channel radio, as I mentioned we only use two channels. One controls the rudder servo and the other controls the winch. But with the 20 memories it means you can have different settings across 20 different boats if necessary. This is quite useful and I actually use this radio across three different boats. Um, I just purchased the extra receivers and leave them in the boat. The transmitters generally uh, come in two different types, mode one and mode two. We use the mode two version and the only difference is the mode two has the throttle on the left hand side and the rudder on the right hand side. The mode one has those swapped over. So you can use either but we, we prefer the mode two. This particular transmitter uses four AA batteries and we find that the dry cells work better than rechargeables on these. Always have a, a spare set in your pocket. Another really useful bit of kit is a lanyard. Um, a good quality lanyard uh, to put around your mech because if you drop it in the water, well, 
they don't work so well afterwards, uh, as you will find out. So that is the basics of a transmitter. Very, very simple. We only use two controls. Returning to the, the parts we use in the boat. So I'm just going to show you, it's actually quite a simple setup. Um, so I, what I'll do is I'll put these together and we'll, we'll make them work whilst uh, on the table here. So the receiver, we try and keep up. I'm, it's better, it's best if that's kept waterproof. So when it's in the boat, put it in a little plastic bag uh, just to keep the water out. But anyway, I'll connect these up. So we start with a battery, um, apply the power. It's a little bit fiddly because you need to see which way around. And that is that way around. So that's the power applied to the receiver. The rudder servo we put into channel one. All of these pins are different channels. Channel one, and the right way around. There is a right and a wrong way. And the winch goes into channel three. Which is that one there. That's in. Okay, so there we have it. So that now is a complete working system. And if I switch my transmitter on, uh, with this one, it won't start up unless all the switches are up and the throttle is down and then it jumps into life. So there we have it and uh, it, it all just works. So um, winch in and out, rudder left and right. And it's that simple. With both the winch and the rudder servo, there are small alterations you can make. For instance, on the winch, you can alter the endpoints. That is where the winch starts to pull in and where it stops pulling in. And these, unusually, are actually adjusted by a setting on the transmitter, not on the winch itself. And the same for the rudder servo. You can alter the uh, the arc, the swing of the rudder, you can alter its direction um, and all these settings are on the transmitter but you won't find these settings on the very cheaper transmitter sets it's only the mid-range transmitter, that's why it's best to get a slightly better transmitter. Thank you for watching this video, I hope you found that useful if you did please like and subscribe and I look forward to seeing you on the next one.